I'm here with a 2020 Toyota Supra, but unlike the one you probably have in your garage, this one is a little bit different. See that sign, these stickers all over the car? EAG, that stands for European Auto Group, who's invited me here in San Antonio, Texas to drive this particular Supra. Why is this one so special? That's because if you look inside, this is the first Supra that EAG has converted to manual. That's right. Toyota only offers this car with an eight-speed automatic transmission, but the heroes over at EAG will gladly swap it for you for a small fee. We're gonna go ahead and drive this Supra. We're gonna be the first ones to do so, but before we do, let's go ahead and check out where EAG started with. All right, so before we check out the Supra, I am in the manual converted 430 Scuderia. So we have a little over 500 horsepower coming from a 4.3 liter V8. And here's what that sounds like. Oh my goodness. So I'm gonna go ahead and downshift it. We've got the gated manual box here. <laughs> That's not even close to redline. We've got a little bit of a chilly day going on here in San Antonio, Texas. So I'm taking it a little easy on the car, but oh my God, I don't think I've ever experienced anything this crazy. All right, here we go, 5,000 RPM pulling. Oh, a little bit of a bad gear change on my part, <laughs> but the car feels incredible. The steering is telepathic. Oh my gosh, the clink that the manual makes in your hand, it's a little difficult to get used to it at first. You kind of have to look at your shifts. You have to get in gel with it. It's not the easiest car to drive. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be hard. Oh. <laughs> when you get it just right, and you get the transmission shifting perfectly, that metal clink, oh. It just makes such a nice feel in your hand. I adore it. And I'm going to go ahead and say, based on that, that this Ferrari 430 Scuderia is the best car I've ever driven. There you go. The best car. Not the best Ferrari. Not the best supercar. The best car. I've driven McLarens. I've driven Lamborghinis. I've driven modern Ferraris. And Oh, none of them really compare to how this car drives. The gated manual is what this car should have had from the get-go. And if you own a F430 Scuderia or a regular F430, I implore you that you should totally take it to these guys to get it manual swapped because it completely changes the character of the car when you can downshift it yourself. Oh my gosh. It's just such a nice feeling having the manual box here. It's so fantastic. This is the best car I've ever driven. And if EAG was able to put this together, I can't wait to see what they've done with the Toyota Supra. So let's go ahead and go back to their shop and let's go take out the Supra. Now let's check out the Supra because that's what we came here for. Now there's usually an automatic knob here, but EAG has ripped that out, put it on a shelf. It's a paperweight now. Now we've got a manual gear lever with a real clutch. Oh, I like the way it feels. It feels a lot like a BMW shifter. That's because it is one. The knob here is actually from a Z4, but EAG says the one you're going to get on your customer car is going to be a bit different. You can actually get as an option. They're going to offer a flip up button, so sort of like an Aventador starter, and you're gonna be able to push a button to activate sport mode. Now all the buttons down here, this one looks a bit rough, but this is not the customer car. It's gonna be finished when EAG is ready to sell it to you, but all of the Toyota buttons are here. You've got your automatic stop, start, defeat, sport mode, parking sensors, and your electronic brake, parking brake. All of that is gonna look perfect when it's done, and EAG has decided to leave in the paddle shifters, but 
but they're going to program them to do something else. What are they gonna do? Not sure yet, they actually want you to decide, so be sure to leave a comment down in the comment section on what you think EAG should do with the paddle shifters now that they no longer have the responsibility of shifting gears. So let's go ahead and drive the world's first and only manual Toyota Supra. All right, so I'm out driving the world's first and only manual swap Toyota Supra. Let's go ahead and downshift it. Oh yes, that straight six makes a great noise. Let's go ahead and downshift it. So I get the pop pops, yes. When you come off the throttle, you get the cracks and pops. But this car does feel very quiet, very refined. It almost feels factory. This doesn't feel like an aftermarket product. So EAG says that they're not going to do a one manual fits all model. The customer is always right. So depending on what you want to do with your car, they will sell you a variety of transmissions. This one that I have, for example, has really tall gearing. So I'm doing fourth gear quite comfortably. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and downshift into third. That's a speed I don't wanna read out on camera publicly. Uh, there's fourth gear. Uh, Art, the owner, tells me that this car in fourth gear will do about 135 miles an hour, so incredibly fast. Uh, and this transmission is from a diesel BMW, so it can take a ton of torque. And theoretically, this engine can be tuned to over a thousand horsepower, and this transmission will take it. So if you're looking to do like a half mile, 200 miles an hour, this is the transmission you're gonna wanna opt for. In my opinion, it's a little long-legged for me. I think I would prefer this car with a shorter gear ratio so I get to do more shifting. I've been driving this car at highway speeds now. I have not gone out of fourth gear. I don't think that fifth or sixth are even necessary. So for me, I'd rather have a little bit of a shorter gear ratio. I think it would make the car a little bit more fun. And I should note that this car is not 100% finished for example I've got the shifter out of a Z4 yours will have a custom design shifter from EAG and the pedal box isn't quite perfect um, so the clutch does feel great I'm gonna go ahead and shift now it's real short real light real easy uh, to shift this car with the clutch it's nice clutch if you're gonna go for more power it is probably going to be a little bit of a heavier uh, clutch if you do opt for the more powerful uh, car but the clutch pedal itself is mounted really close to the door so I'm finding that there is a dead pedal where I can rest my foot comfortably but I can't quite get there to the left of the pedal I'm having to go underneath it to rest there so EAG might need to cut out may, might need to move that pedal just a little bit because it is a little bit awkward getting my foot onto that dead pedal and the other thing that's a bit weird about the pedal box is I'm on the throttle now if I need to move on to the brakes the brake is a lot further forward than that accelerator pedal so when I come off the gas onto the brake I'm having to lift my foot up and put it onto the brake I've gotten used to it over time uh, I've driven this car for a little bit now I've gotten used to the brake but the clutch yeah it's just a little bit annoying having to go underneath it to get to the dead pedal but I, I'm still happy that EAG made this car. I think that Toyota made a big mistake because after driving this car for a little bit, it's so fun. It's such a nice cruising car because the Supra is so compliant. It's so quiet. I love the BMW-ness of it. You might not. You might be angry that this car was co-developed with BMW, but I like the fact that it, it's a really nice GT car. And with the manual, I feel like I would be happy to just do some highway pulls in this car, to take it to the drag strip, take it to the racetrack even, because it just feels so natural. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out now. Let's see under throttle. Whoop, get some wheel slip. There we go. Oh yeah. Not bad. I think the clutch stuck a little bit when I tried to do a harder launch there. But again, this car is not finished yet. Yours is gonna be all ironed out. But I think Toyota made a mistake here because this engine, 
with a manual, with a BMW manual especially, is just a really nice feeling. It's slick like a BMW manual would be. So I can only just imagine how good this car would have been if Toyota had decided to do it themselves. But luckily, we don't need to imagine that because EAG is here. Not all heroes wear capes. Some do manual swaps. Oh, yes, I'm happy EAG did this. I'm really happy I got to drive it. I'm looking forward to see, seeing what all these customer cars look like because I think super owners that wished this car had a manual transmission are gonna be really happy if they come to EAG and get these this transmission done. Oh yeah, so smooth. I like it a lot. I'm real happy EAG exists and they're just gonna keep going with these manual swaps. They're gonna be swapping a Huracan. They're gonna be swapping maybe a C8 Corvette, GT500. They've got a lot of things in the works. So if you're one of those internet commenters that's always saying, I'd buy that if it had a manual, give EAG a call and maybe they can make your dreams a reality. Wow, so that was the world's first manual Supra and we got to drive a Ferrari Scuderia, the only one in the world that's manual. So pretty spectacular day. EAG is taking orders for the manual Supra swap starting right now. $6,000 deposit, $12,000 total, and each car is gonna be tailored to what the customer wants. That means power, that means gear ratios. All of that can be done right here at EAG. You don't have to go anywhere else. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. See you next time.